Welcome friends. This video is going back to the basics with a gentle yoga flow. We're going to focus on things like the breath, pelvic tilt, spinal movement, the importance of your feet and hands as foundations, and some easy basic sun salutations. So let's start on our backs. Rest one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest. And see if you can notice that your chest and your belly both move on the inhale and the exhale. This is what we call diaphragmatic breathing. So that the diaphragm is the main muscle of respiration. And when we breathe fully, the diaphragm moves down as it contracts on the inhale and relaxes back up on the exhale. The diaphragm gives us a gentle massage of our internal organs and stimulates the lymphatic system, the cardiovascular system, the nervous system. You can't really overstate the importance of the breath. Another really basic foundation is our pelvis and the tilt of our pelvis. So you can bring your hands to your belly and as you inhale, start to lift the front of the hip bones forward. And as you exhale, press them down. The floor is a great reference point for just feeling how much arch we have in our back and how much we can flatten our back, have the, the whole spine flush to the ground. And this is gonna set up the whole foundation of our spine, whether we're standing, seated, or lying down. So just continue with a few more pelvic tilts, noticing what creates the anterior tilt, arching the back, and the posterior tilt, flattening the back. And just this alone is something that is really important to do every day in a mindful way. And now we're gonna work with some bridge pose lifts. You start with your hands by your hips, feet hip distance apart. As you inhale, push into your feet, lift your arms up over your head. And as you exhale, bring your hips slowly back down as you bring your arms back down to starting position. As you inhale and lift your hips up, keep your knees squeezing together, not so that they touch, but so that they don't splay out. And you wanna feel your glutes activate, turn on. As you exhale, try and round your spine, lowering down slowly, and see if you can lower your hands and your hips at the same time. So we'll do that a couple more times. Inhale, lift up, creating an arch in the low back and the whole back, the upper back. You exhale, lower down, more or less flattening your back. And this is almost like a gentle cat-cow on your back. Making sure that the spine moves and it's not stuck is so important to our health to the health of our spine, the health of our body, which in turn leads to emotional health and stability. Hug your knees into your chest, gently rock around on your hips, giving yourself a little massage on your back and your, your hips. You can go side to side or in circles, it's up to you. I love doing the circles because I like getting my hips and my low back. Make sure you do both directions of the circles. Moving nice and slowly. So you can feel the intricacies and in all the little massage points as you move your hips around. And rock on up. So rock on up to seated, and we'll work with some pelvic tilts. So we can do a full cat-cow, really rounding the upper back and giving a big arch and a chest lift to the upper back. Or we can focus on mainly the pelvis tilting. So keeping the upper body relatively still, but just arching the low back, and then a little, little teeny bit of a posterior tilt. 
But notice how it's impossible to isolate the low back or the pelvis completely because everything is connected. So the whole back is going to move, but not as much as if we were trying to get into the full cat-cow. So one of the things that is really basic but in advance in some ways is being able to focus on different parts of your spine and noticing what it feels like to move that particular part of your spine. And this will make more sense as you practice. So now we're gonna work on our feet. So cross your left ankle above your right knee and then thread the fingers of your right hand in between all the toes of your left foot. Try and get all the way to the base of your fingers and the base of your toes. And then just begin to massage your toes, circle your ankles. Let's get some movement going in our feet. Our feet are so important, and if you get injured, if your foot gets injured, you'll even appreciate them more. So it's important to have movement in the feet. The feet have like 26 bones. So there's a lot of bones and tendons and ligaments packed into a very small area. Now spread your fingers to spread the toes. Release the fingers and see if you can keep your toes spread. This might be easy for you or it might take a little more practice to be able to do it effectively. No big deal. And now we'll do the other foot, the right foot. So thread your, the fingers of your left hand between your toes. Start to circle around your, your ankle. Flex the foot back and forth. Just any movement, as long as it's gentle enough so it doesn't cause pain. Then spread the fingers, spread the toes. And we'll come into tabletop, tuck your toes, and sit back on your heels. Now, if this is too much stress on your foot, you can always lean forward a little bit. You can have a block in front of you. You don't have to go as far down. I mean, you can move your hips off your heels and back on, you can lean back. So you decide how much pressure you want on your feet and how long you wanna keep it there. That's a good toe stretch. Now tap out the top of your feet on the floor. And this time we're gonna sit back on our heels with our toes pointed behind us. We're gonna stretch the top of the feet. So bring your hands behind your feet, scoop out your belly, and see if you can lift your knees up towards your chest. You might be able to find a balance here. And you might find that you can't lift your knees up at all, but that's okay. We're really trying to go for the stretch and just learning more about our bodies and where we're tight, where we're a little bit open. So find that balance point of what works for you today. And then come back down onto your hands and knees and come into your tabletop position. Try and keep a neutral spine. So don't arch your back, don't let your hips sag, don't round the back. And then again here, we're gonna come into these pelvic tilts in tabletop. So we don't have our hips on the floor, so there's gonna be a little more range of motion. But just seeing if you can isolate the tilt more in the hips, letting the upper body be relatively still. So again, it won't be as big a movement as a full cat-cow. But it's important to know like how the pelvic works and how much to tilt it and just making sure that the pelvis isn't stuck. And now rotate your hands so your fingers face your knees with the thumbs on the outside and start to rock forward and back. This is gonna stretch out the wrists and the fingers, the back of the wrists. You can always bring your hand and your knees closer to each other for less of a stretch. And sit back on your heels again, interlace your fingers, rotate the palms out, bring your arms over your head, reach your arms back as you reach your ribs back. So keep the ribs knitting in as you reach your arms back. We're just gonna lift and lower our arms, and then shake out the hands. Now you can make fists and bring your knuckles together and bend and straighten elbows. Try not to let the knuckles separate. You can either do this in the air or you can do it on the ground. So same thing, the hands are in fists, the knuckles are together, you bend the elbows, and then you straighten the elbows. 
So bending the elbows releases the stretch and straightening the elbows increases the stretch. So we're trying to feel a stretch on the top of the wrist. Another way to do this is to flip your palms facing up, fingers facing towards your knees, and move back and forth. So now come back into your tabletop position, knees under the hips, hands under the shoulders, and begin some full cat cows. So now we're focusing on moving the whole spine. And you could even think of the pelvis leading the way. There's a lot of different ways to do cat cows and lifting the shoulders, I mean, the chest and the hips together is one way of doing it. And rolling from the pelvis is another way. So I'm just showing you the lifting the hips and the chest together in this video. And again, this is something that would be really good to incorporate into your day, every day, even just if it's just for a minute or two. Then I'll sit back on your heels and rest in child's pose. And remember, you can always place a blanket on the, behind your knees, between your calves and your thighs if your hips won't go all the way down or if there's any discomfort in your knees, if the knees feel too tight doing child's pose. Otherwise, just let your body relax and see if you can feel an even roundness in your back as you rest in child's pose. And inhale back up to tabletop. And exhale back to child's pose. So inhale into cat, rounding forward. And exhale, a little cow, stretching back to the heels. Again, let the breath lead the way and find a rhythmic motion here. So it feels like a wave. You feel like you're connecting to a bigger energy. And tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. Okay, you can work with that pelvic tilt. It's just little movements, bringing a little more of an arch to your low back, a little more of a roundness. And then we'll do full cat cow spinal waves from down dog into plank. Really trying to feel the spine moving and creating a wave-like motion. And come back to your down dog for a few breaths. And inhale up onto your toes and keeping your hips as high as possible, walk your feet forward to your hands. Nice and slowly. Allow your heels to the ground. And even in your forward fold, just do those little pelvic tilts. It's very subtle, you could easily miss it, but when you pay attention, you can see it in the video. And notice how it changes the stretch of your hamstrings, or the stretch in your spine. And then we'll come from Uttanasana to Ardha Uttanasana. So inhale, lift into your back, stretch halfway up, lengthen the spine, and exhale, bow, blowing your ribs towards your thighs. Inhale, lift your ribs away from your thighs, lengthen the spine, exhale, bow in. Go back and forth. You can always bend your knees a little bit if your hamstrings are tight. Then bring your hands to your hips. Hug your elbows in towards each other and extend outward through your spine as you inhale, come up to stand. We're coming into Tadasana, mountain pose. You can do little pelvic tilts here. On your next inhale, reach your arms up. And as you exhale, bow towards the earth. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, bow. Inhale, rise all the way up again to stand. Fingers toward the sky. 
Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, bow softly, fingertips touching the earth. Inhale, lift and lengthen the spine. Exhale, softly bow. Inhale, rise all the way up, stretch your fingers toward the sky. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bow. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, bow. Inhale, rise all the way up again, rooting down through your feet, reaching up through the fingertips. And exhale, hands to your heart center. Let's stay in Tadasana, balancing the weight evenly on all four corners of your feet. And inhale, stretch up. Exhale, bow. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, bow. Step your left leg back into a lunge and lower your le left knee softly to the floor. Bring your shoulders back and reach your arms up. And even here, we're going to do these little subtle pelvic tilts. So letting the front hip bones come forward and then drawing them back. Place your hands back down and step back, downward facing dog. You can bend one knee at a time and just really let your, give yourself time to settle into your down dog. And walk your feet forward to your hands. Lower your heels down. Step your right leg back, lower your right knee to the earth. Take your shoulders back, inhale, reach your arms up. Notice how when you tilt your tailbone down that your belly automatically draws in and up a little bit more, toning your abs. So you can reach up with your heart and then place your hands down and step back, downward facing dog. So every time you come into down dog, there's an opportunity to lengthen your spine, to notice little subtleties in all different places in your body. And walk your feet forward to your hands. Spread your feet open a little bit. You can turn your toes out and we'll come into a squat malasana. There's so many benefits to malasana. It opens your hips and groins, stretches your ankles, keeps the knee and hip joints healthy. It can even prepare you for childbirth. So come on back up. Heel toe your feet out to widen your stance. Bend your elbows and just let the, your head dangle. So let the weight of your head stretch, stretch out your neck and upper back. Then heel toe your feet back in again. Come back into your squat, malasana. And then we'll make our way onto our backs. So if you wanna work on your core, you can roll down slowly like I'm doing here, trying to resist that on a plop to the earth. <laughs> and then bring your feet in towards your hips, bring your knees to your chest. And again, rock around a little bit, giving yourself a little self-massage. You can separate the knees and circle the knees in opposite directions. Another way of just getting those hip joints moving. And hug your knees in a little bit tighter to your chest and stretch out for Savasana. So even here in Savasana, we can just notice that pelvic tilt and notice if you need to arch your back a little bit more or lengthen your back a little bit more. Notice the parts of your back that are touching the earth. Ideally, you want all your ribs on the floor, a little bit of space underneath your low back. Relax your hips. Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw. And just let yourself sink into this place of deep relaxation. You can stay here as long as you like. Namaste. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button, share with your friends, and leave a comment. I'm really interested in questions that you may have 
any suggestions, and have a beautiful day.